Today is going to be our last lecture on uh, on minerals, and we're going to look at mineral formation, uh, some of the, the groups of minerals, and a few interesting facts on uh, different types of minerals. One way minerals are formed is through the uh, process of cooling of magma or molten rock. Uh, these types of minerals form uh, definitely form uh, crystals. You see from this geode here, all well, the crystals inside of it. Uh, lava, which is uh, magma has reached the surface, uh, will also form minerals, but those crystals will be very, very tiny. And typically, the longer the uh, magma has a chance to cool, the larger the crystals will be. Another way which mineral forms are when large bodies of water evaporate and leave the mineral deposits behind. Uh, halite table salt, salt if you will, uh, gypsum, especially around Grand Rapids here. These uh, minerals were left when this area was covered by a large, shallow, warm, ancient seas. And as the water evaporated, left behind these deposits. Underneath the city of Detroit are uh, our salt mines. And uh, much of our salt is mined underneath the, the city of Detroit. Uh, in Grand Rapids here, you get over by John Ball Park and underneath the Grand River, uh, there are large deposits of gypsum. And these deposits were uh, definitely mined out many years ago, and a wall board, gypsum board was formed. And uh, mostly these uh, mines are no longer operated in Grand Rapids. On the, uh, on the east side of the river, these old gypsum mines are used as a Michigan natural storage, and they use uh, this area to store foods and, oh, important documents, as the, uh, the temperatures in these mines are a constant 55 degrees. The last way we're going to look at mineral formation is from high pressure and high temperatures deep within the earth. Uh, when you start getting deep within the earth, these uh, high pressures and temperatures make the magma very, very uh, runny, watery, if you will. And uh, as it solidifies, it forms very, very pure crystals. Uh, many of our gemstones are, uh, are made from this, you know, diamond in particular. And uh, over time, uh, these uh, magma deposits will end up working their way to the surface. Uh, you know, you think of the diamond mines and the you know opal, topaz, emeralds, rubies, and so forth. But these are all formed deep within the earth, where this high pressure and temperatures really form very, very pure crystals. Minerals are classified by their composition. And uh, these next couple few slides here, we're going to explore some of these groups. But it's an interesting fact that most of these groups have uh, oxygen in their uh, chemical makeup. And uh, by virtue of this, oxygen by weight has the uh, largest percentage of any element in the Earth's crust, which a lot of people don't think of. They always think of it as a gas. But when it, it easily combines with many, many different elements. And so oxygen by weight is really the largest percentage of any element within the Earth's crust. The most common mineral group in the Earth's crust are the silicates. Uh, these silicates, uh, especially when you think about quartz, are composed of silicon and oxygen. Uh, of quartz, you know, sand. Uh, quartz is found in many, many different types of rocks, which we'll look at a little bit later. Uh, you know, especially when you start talking about granite. But the silicates definitely are the most common mineral group in the Earth's crust and uh, is used quite a bit. You know, I think of the silicates, uh, the making of glass, and uh, of the different products that we use. Another group of uh, minerals are the halites. Uh, typically, we like to think of uh, salt here. Uh, and these minerals form from evaporation. These minerals are uh, named after the uh, a group on the periodic t table. And um, as you can see from the picture, these uh, shallow seas would evaporate fairly easily, easily and leave the, uh, the deposits behind. Uh, the Great Salt Lake in Utah is an example of evaporation in the mineral halite left behind. Uh, many people use uh, sea salt as a you know, preservative of food or to flavor their food. And um, many of the areas around the Mediterranean Sea they will uh, well, dam up, if you will, uh, 
some water off the Mediterranean and evaporate the uh, water and it leaves the uh, the salt behind and then it's used you know it's marketed and as used as a uh, flavor enhancer for food there are some other groups of minerals carbonates uh, this group of mineral contain uh, carbon and oxygen the oxides are a group of metals or a group of uh, minerals that contain a, a metal and oxygen on a couple other groups are the sulfates and the sulfides. Uh, both of these groups contain the, uh, the element sulfur. Kind of an interesting uh, group are called the native elements. And these elements are found in nature, but they're not combined with any other materials. If you watch Gold Rush and see the, the gold flakes in the pan or the gold nuggets there, this would be considered a native element. Uh, Michigan at one time, especially in the Upper Peninsula, where uh, copper was mined, and much of this copper was found uncombined with any other material. So uh, much of this copper up there would be considered a native element.